<coughs> Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Star Trek, Space Command, Twilight Zone Companion, uh, uh, Smurfs, He-Man, Super Friends, on and on and on. But today we're going to talk about a very interesting oddity, science fiction oddity. It's a movie called Cloverfield Paradox, the third in the Cloverfield movies. Now, what's interesting about this movie is it was originally made as a theatrical feature for Paramount Studios, but Paramount decided when they saw it that they weren't going to release it theatrically. Instead, they sold it to Netflix for $50 million, five zero million dollars and it just debuted on Netflix a few days ago, recently, and uh, I watched it in London with uh, my friend Ron, and uh, it's well produced. It looks really good. It has a really good cast, actors and actresses, who have been in many fine movies and TV shows, including uh, Black Mirror, the, the San Junipero episode, and uh, Selma, the actor who played Martin Luther King, and so forth. But the cake doesn't rise. It's just a goofy, goofy, goofy movie. <clears throat> and uh, uh, set on a space station, and it, it it's one of these movies where weird stuff happens, and at the end of the day, it's like, well, why did that happen? God knows. God knows. It's a very strange movie. It was originally in development under the title God Particle, and so it may have been something that originally wasn't going to be a Cloverfield movie, but then they realized it could be. It was in development for a while. It, uh, it was Bad Robot made at J.J. Abrams' company, and it's set on a space station, and it is... It's very interesting to make a list of best space station movies and worst space station movies and those in between. For instance, my favorite space, space station movies ever or movies that have space stations in them. Uh, 2001 is at the top of the heap, of course. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant movie. Great space station. Great everything. Uh, there's another movie I love that's set on a space station. It's called Solaris. It's based on a novel by Stanislaw Lem. It's not the American version with George Clooney. It is the Russian version that came first, directed by Andrei Tarkovsky. I urge you to... <coughs> <clears throat> seek it out. It's well worth watching. Wonderful film. Then there's movies that I'm less fond of, like Event Horizon, which I don't like. Some people like it. Uh, there's also that that recent movie that came out. I'm blanking on the name, but it was about uh, the, uh, it, um, the, the 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 guy who comes out of cryo sleep and you know thaws out a woman to be keep him company. It was okay. It wasn't a bad movie. Gorgeous, gorgeous uh, design. I'm sure I'll remember the name eventually. But um, but let's get back to Cloverfield Paradox. <sighs> well, first of all, it has a crawling hand, and, and that, that helps. Any movie with a crawling hand, that's a plus. There's actually a, a movie called The Crawling Hand that, again, if you want to see something really fun, watch that. I saw it when I was a kid, and it scared me. But, uh, but you know... <sighs> It's a fun movie. If you if you want a movie that doesn't really tax you and is kind of fun, and watch it with a group of people because you'll you'll have ton, tons of things to say, and it'll it'll uh, it'll really be a it's it's entertaining that way. It's a fun movie to watch with others because you can kind of yell at the screen and say, "What are you doing? Don't go that way. Don't do that." But uh, the sets are gorgeous, and in, to the degree that I actually emailed J.J. Abrams and said, what happened to those sets? Because we could use them for Space Command, and uh, he was kind enough to email, email, me, email me back immediately and said, uh, well, we trashed them, Paramount trashed them a year and a half ago, sadly, and uh, so that's the way it goes. In the old days of the studios, of course, they kept their sets, and uh, so, for instance, in Twilight Zone, Rod, Rod Serling shot Twilight Zone at, at MGM, and he had access to all the props and costumes and sets, that uh, that were made for any t Metro Golden Mare movie uh, from the last several decades prior to Twilight Zone, because Twilight Zone began in 1959, and it aired in 1959, debuted, and uh, so they had stuff from Andy Hardy and tons of stuff from Forbidden Planet, and uh, and on and on and on, and uh, it really helped their production. And even when I was at Universal doing Sliders, uh, of, uh, during the fourth season of Sliders, I was a producer on that show. We used stuff from Time Cop and Twelve Monkeys and. Jurassic Park and so forth. So I love having that that uh, that uh, wonderful um, backbench of stuff to use. But uh, but more and more nowadays in productions, they don't store stuff; they just destroy it. So once we're up and running again on Space Command, I'm going to put a, the word out to a number of different companies and set builders to say, don't just trash your stuff. If if you want to have get rid of it, give it to us because I can definitely use all that stuff. The more the more the better, because it's a shame that they build these wonderful you know, spaceship sets. I remember back when they did the American Solaris 
they actually auctioned off those sets. They were something like 1200 bucks opening bid for an entire spaceship set. I wasn't doing Space Command at that point. It would be a year or two later uh, that I started on Space Command. But uh, but if I had uh, if I had been doing Space Command, I would have bid on those sets. They were gorgeous. And again, the best the best place to get those set, those kind of sets are from movies that tank <laughs> because people didn't see them but then you can repurpose them and uh so if any of you have spaceship sets you want to get rid of just give a give a holler but um <clears throat> but when you watch cloverfield paradox you'll see that it's missing a bat and the cloverfield movies have always been rather odd anyway the first one the idea was what if aliens invaded and uh, <clears throat> and rather than going with the army and the White House and all that, you were with just regular people in their camcorders as this stuff's happening. So you see the army attacking these monsters in the periphery and so forth. So it was a fun idea, but it didn't really work that well. It was okay. Uh, and the second one, you know, was pretty good. John Goodman was this crazy survivalist, and that was interesting. It was a fun movie. <clears throat> Third one. Well, Paramount fobbed it off on Netflix, and more and more you may get those kind of things happening as the studios see ways to make back their investor investment and diminish risk by simply giving it to Netflix for uh, for millions and millions of dollars. But uh, but anyway, so so I guess it's the equivalent of a drive-in movie uh, back when we were kids, uh, some of us, and uh, where, okay, you go and you have a good time with a movie like The Blob or some of these B-movies. They really don't have science fiction B-movies much anymore. They've either got sort of the less entertaining stuff like like uh the 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 movies on the sci-fi channel and maybe and maybe some of you like like those films uh i find them a little less than entertaining but uh but you know when i was a kid growing up you had george pal and ray harryhausen and all these wonderful filmmakers doing great science fiction films that uh that weren't the a list releases the the big releases but they were still incredibly entertaining every now and then you get those still here in uh you know, in the in in the states, but usually those are movies like Moon or Another Earth, and they're often indie films. But uh, every now and then, one slides by. But anyway, that's about it for now. Um, if you've got Netflix, it doesn't cost any money to check out Cloverfield Paradox. You might enjoy it, uh, but it's certainly not going to be on my uh, my list of top ten. And uh, but you know, but you know, any any time you make a movie or a TV show. Trying your best. You're hoping. You're hoping the mixture will work. You're hoping the script will work. The the direction will work. The acting will work. Everything. The cast will meld and merge. Uh, you know, it's. We just watched Elaine and I for Valentine's Day. We ju just watched The Princess Bride, and that's a wonderful movie with a great ensemble. We also went and saw Paddington Two, which I actually quite liked. I think it's a wonderful film. I highly recommend that. But anyway, so that's that's my commentary for Cloverfield Paradox. Uh, you know, you uh, pay your money and you take your chances. But in this case, if you've subscribed to Netflix, you don't have to pay any money at all beyond your subscription so that makes it worth uh, worth checking out anyway that's it for now more to come soon and uh hope you're having a great day take care bye bye